ಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣೆ ಸಾಪಕಾಯಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣೆ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯತೆ ನಮ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜ್ಯೋತಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮಾಮೃತಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲಟಸ್ ಪೇಟು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಿ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಬೋ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಟು ದ ರಿಯಲ್ to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality <clears throat> today's topic his life is intensely practical life there is no trace of hypocrisy extremely simple extremely devoted whole mind the whole thing has been placed at the lotus feet of the divine mother remarkable calmness and remarkable administration of spirituality if we go through the pages of gospel of shri ram krishna every page every sentence every word speaks and speaks of spirituality and spirituality alone nothing else nothing else so let us today try to understand what is that hallmark of spirituality we may not be able to know invisible god many times the doubts come to our mind in spite of our spiritual practices whether god does really hear our prayer such doubts do come sometimes we are placed in crisis but it depends upon how you withstand it how you remain steady at every point of situation not yielding to the situation but holding on to the cherished principle in life if you have that kind of steadfastness in you that is considered the hallmark of spirituality there should not be any kind of wavering in the mind it is completely one pointed and directed towards one thing 
that is towards god who is that god he is nothing but our own real self behind this body mind complex it is that which exists even when the body perishes it is that which exists even when the mind dissolves it is that supreme reality if we have the vision of that reality if we get into that highest state of experience then we have attained the maximum heights in spirituality you become one with the universe the universe belongs to you and you belong to the universe you belong to all the people irrespective of country race nation etc everyone has claim over you your love is for everyone you are concerned about all the beings in the whole universe your love has assumed such infinite dimension there is nothing that is excluded in that highest form of love it is that manifestation of love that we call god he is always concerned if you go through shri ramakrishna's life you can find out this unique feature how shri ramakrishna was concerned about the people when he was passing through the streets in calcutta he would see through the window people walking and rushing helter skelter running what for what people this why they are crazy crazy for nothing they are beating the bush getting nothing they are rushing they are becoming crazy to get thorns in life they are running after the imitation jewels forgetting the real diamond is in your own heart what a great pity it is having forgotten this we are in never ending troubles then we run after help who will help us but millions and millions of people every day are being born every day they are meeting the grave still people are not learning the lesson that shows everyone needs certain experience everyone needs to pass through the unpleasant experience of misery he needs to pass through that experience until he comes to understanding that misery was in a way a blessing to him it opened his eyes when he reached that stage then he is no more afraid of misery that is what is needed we should never be afraid of anything in this world then you are the hero otherwise you are zero that is my 
understanding of religion. Anyway, the most important factor in spirituality is our ability to resist temptations that come rushing to us in order to destroy us. Temptations. They just kill you. Do you want to take the truth? Yield to the temptations and find out the truth yourself. Whether you are ruined or whether you are saved. Show me one person who has been saved having passed through temptations. Show me one single person. Bearing up against temptations and prevailing over them is the prominent feature of a person of spirituality. A person of spirituality is a person based on principles in life. He is not bothered about anything else. Such people are not afraid of anything. They are not afraid of any circumstances or any surroundings or any situations. They remain firm. They remain steady in their devotion to truth, in their devotion to God. One has to resist temptation. Without that, you can't have experience of spirituality. You may have every day symposium, have a number of discussions, intellectual study. That's all. But how far you are practical, it depends upon that. Now let us take some cases. How this remarkable quality of resisting temptation was highly manifest in great people. Why do we call a person great? Why do we call a person a holy? Why? It is because of this. It is because of this. Tremendous renunciation. That's it. If we study the life of Buddha, a famous dialogue is worth mentioning. Somebody asked him, Sir, how is that final state of nirvana is attained? Everybody wants to put the direct question. They want direct answer without any preparation. Even if I say the, the truth, you will not be able to appreciate it unless you are prepared for it. That's a very important point we should note. When Buddha was asked this question, how is that final state of nirvana attained? He answered very significantly. He said, when the fire of lust is gone out, mark every 
sentence which he has spoken it's golden golden if you want to be spiritual if you want to be spiritual when the fire of lust is gone out secondly when the fires of hatred and delusion are gone out see thirdly when the troubles of mind arising from blind credulity and all other evils have ceased then it is said that final state of nirvana is attained this is the statement of lord buddha not as simple theory but a statement that has come through his own experience of that highest state of nirvana when he attained to that highest state of awakening that's what is meant by buddha buddha means awakened who has reached that highest state he is called buddha there is nothing more for him to know there is nothing more for him to enjoy there is nothing more that he desires everything is full full to the brim that is the state of nirvana that is the state which bhagwan buddha realized in his own life how could he do that could it be possible for him had he remained in the kingdom enjoying all the luxuries and engaging himself in uh, all sorts of uh, activities running here and there for uh, getting dollars trying to see every day how much my bank account is no he wanted to make use of all his energy at his command towards the realization of the highest state first thing first yes i want to attain master's degree will you not go and study night and day to get that degree if you really are serious about it you forget about everything you forget even to take food you forget even to drink water because your whole mind is concentrated on studies because you have to get master's degree that only shows how your whole being is on that subject in the same manner your whole being must be on getting into that highest state of nirvana if that is done you have got it so when lord buddha sat under the bodhi tree with what determination he sat he said he would not get up from this come what may he was even prepared to give up his mortal frame he is not afraid of anything what is this if i can't get that illumination it is useless to live in this dirty way of life i must find out the truth i want nothing but that nothing else must come on the way if anything that comes on his way that should be rejected without any consideration so when buddha was concentrating 
on that highest idea of spiritual illumination slowly his mind was rising up his mind got cleared off of all the impurities all the inherent impressions are sorted out the channel was made clear and he is becoming more and more concentrated more and more pointed more and more feeling inner peace more and more enjoying the joy he doesn't want to give up that well what is this the more i concentrate the more i am getting peace the more i am getting joy so why not i increase my concentration that way his mind was becoming so deeply focused on that highest state then as in the case of every body before reaching that highest state everybody will have to pass through some acid tests there is no exception for spiritual person in fact he will have to pass through harder tests than the so called people in this world talking about severe crisis and severe situations etc these are all nothing nothing so when lord buddha was sitting there with that high concentration then a spirit form came there showing all kinds of gestures trying to overpower him that is to say trying to we trying to drag out buddha's mind from that highest state of concentration to words its own attractions he began to spread the net of so many varieties of entertainment so that buddha can come down and then he would be imprisoned in that false joy in the form of entertainment it tried its many ways but buddha never turned his face towards that with full strength of will he faced the situation he withstood all these temptations and finally got wonderful enlightenment then the whole truth is revealed then wherever buddha goes it is as if god himself walking whatever buddha speaks it is as if lord buddha is speaking it is lord god himself speaking and when he speaks all his words for nectar when he talks he talks full of love kindness and affection he himself would feel the tremendous concern about the well-being of the people that is the highest spiritual hallmark in lord jesus life also we have seen how during his period of sadhana the satan came and tried to show him all sorts of temptations but jesus never yielded to them finally he won 
there are number of instances there is there was one famous uh, rishi in fact it is said some rishis are living permanently as long as the universe exists some sages are given that kind of life because of their merits because of their highest spiritual quality the universe wants such people otherwise how things go in a proper way so the name of one such rishi was markandeya a man of very high qualities during his formative period he got very good education good ideas were given to his mind he was reading through the upanishads and other sacred scriptures at the proper age 8 or 9 he got upanayana samskar that is uh, the thread ceremony in uh, india the brahmins at the age of 8 or 9 they do this samskar to the person when he receives that it is as if he is born again so that was the beginning of spirituality the spirituality begins when he gets this thread and he will be given the gayatri mantra which is very sacred by repeating the gayatri one can get whatever he wants so how in the those days they were very much particular about their children they were guarded literally in every sense they would try to give always good ideas and they would try to always see how the children are well based in character in morality in following noble virtues before actually one enters into life all these things were taken care of that was the primary duty of the parents anyway so this boy became master in his studies he studied all the vedas and all the connected books he practiced very rigid self control that means he establishes mastership over the senses he didn't become slave so he was really a hero in the true sense of the term so he wa- controlled all these senses so that he could use them in a proper way for a proper thing so when he gave attention to these things in course of time he became very well established in tranquility he was peaceful all the time he has received gayatri mantra he felt great joy well this mantra is given to me why not i realize it in this very life i want not after death not after getting 60 years or 70 years age not after getting old no i want to have 
that experience even before I become old. Even before my body and senses become weak, I want to have that final experience. Let me do whatever necessary towards that end. That was his zeal. So with that great zeal, he began to meditate upon. He went to a sacred place in a forest, found out a hermitage, which was situated on the bank of a river, a holy river. Every day, exactly morning at three o'clock, before sunrise, he would get up, go to the river, take the bath, offer some worship, and he would sit for meditation for long hours. The idea of enjoying the world now and to think of God in the end, this kind of uh, calculation was not in him. In fact, Sri Ramakrishna would often say, Well, why are you suffering? Because you want to enjoy the world first and want to have God in the end. That's why you are suffering. You try to have God in the beginning and then enjoy the world. Then you will not suffer at all. But we are so weak, we can't do that. That's the problem. Anyway, this particular boy, he was so much full of zeal, he sat through. And because he was so strong, because he has full control over his uh, indriyas, eyes, ears, tongue, etc. He was very steadily doing tapas. As I said earlier, he also would have to pass through unpleasant experience of temptations. It's very unpleasant because if you, if you yield to those, your life is smashed completely. That is the most unpleasantness. If you overcome, then you are the king of yourself, the true king. You get everything, that everything includes that enjoyment. It's a trash. He comes to feel that. Compared to the vision of God, what is this enjoyment? Rubbish. That's how they feel. That is why it is incomparable. So, when he was sitting in meditation, at some point of time, there was suddenly the whole atmosphere is uh, becoming extraordinarily pleasant. to excite the feeling of pleasantness. And then it followed, there was a light music. So like that, varieties of temperaments, I mean entertainments, they began to be present there, one by one, one by one. But Markandeya's senses were so controlled, they did not pay any attention to these things. He was feeling all that pleasantness, all that joy in his meditation on Gayatri. So, he did not just even for, even for fun, he did not want to see them. He just ignored as if nothing is happening that way. 
he is least bothered about that about those things happening around his hermitage then those temptations in so many ways they came they found this mahatma cannot be shaken by these things then they ran away all the people who came to tempt him they simply ran away if they had continued to stay there they would have been burnt down by the fire of his tapas that is the spiritual power would have burnt them down to ashes if they had continued to tempt this boy markandey so finally he won and his greatness is his greatness is still more to be understood when those people came in so many ways to tempt him he not only kept silent though he knew they have come to distract him he did not curse them he did not curse them that is the fundamental spiritual quality a holy man will never curse anybody even the most wicked person on this earth will not be cursed by the holy man that is the test of holiness that is the test of spirituality that is the test of spirituality there are many cases when wicked fellows the jealous people try to put poison in the food try to kill the mahatma even then the mahatma will not curse him may god bless him may god save him poor fellow does not know what does cobra do it has got poison it gives poison only how can it give nectar it is just like that the wicked nature is there so they are acting in a wicked way now coming to another instance now i am taking the instance from vivekananda swami vivekananda one of the greatest spiritual heroes of the modern times we can ever think of in fact we are commemorating swami vivekananda centenary in this great land of america i consider this america very great because it is here swami vivekananda placed his foot it is here swami vivekananda preached vedanta after after this only he went to england and all other places first spiritual message the elevating message all embracing message that was delivered on this land of america that too in chicago so in the spiritual sense chicago is considered one of the most pilgrim centers of america that's my view the more you understand vivekanand the more you feel the significance of chicago in fact we we are celebrating this event in a very big way on july 4th that is the holiday for every body we are celebrating swami vivekananda's day the day on which swami vivekananda left this mortal frame he attained mahasamadhi he went to the abode of kailas he came from kailas 
he went back to Kailas. He came from Lord Shiva. He merged himself in Lord Shiva. That was the day, July 4th. So please be in touch with us. All of you must be present. All of you must be present. Don't give any reason, excuse. Don't give any reasons. Please come and participate in the programs. About four hours program we have got in Bauric School. All these particulars you can have it in our office. So evening, about four hours, five to ten. Six to ten. Anyway, Swami Vivekanand, what was the hallmark of spirituality in his life? It is purity. He was remarkably pure. His purity was recognized by Sri Ramakrishna. The greatest spiritual teacher only could recognize the greatest disciple Vivekananda. Great Master Sri Ramakrishna, great disciple Vivekananda. Because of his purity, Sri Ramakrishna was prepared to transfer all his spirituality, all his spiritual power which he had attained. Completely he wanted to transfer to Vivekananda. Vivekananda had that capacity to hold on to that power, hold on to that power. The spiritual power is more than millions of fire powers, more than that. To hold on you must have tremendous spiritual strength. Sri Ram Swami Vivekananda was the personification of strength. So he could hold on the spiritual power of Sri Ramakrishna. In his life Vivekananda was also subjected to influences of a dubious nature. Many questionable adventures would confront him. Anybody else in his position would have completely be influenced by such situations. But Vivekananda in all these circumstances, he maintained self-mastery, the hallmark of spirituality. When he was in full bloom of youth, when he would go to sleep, two strikingly dissimilar visions of life would come to his mind. What is that? One was the life of comfort, ease, luxury, life of the senses, whatever you want to enjoy through these senses, go on, enjoy. The enjoyment of wealth, enjoyment of power, enjoyment of name and fame, and more than everything else, the love of a devoted wife and family, in short, the worldly life. The whole thing is put in one word, worldly life. This presented before his mind. The other picture, both these things were present to him. What was the other picture? The other picture was of a monk, a sannyasin, who has no possessions, who has fixed his consciousness 
in the divine reality. And he is not bothered about what he gets next moment. He is just satisfied whatever he gets. He is happy in whatever state he is. And resting at night under the canopy of the sky in the forest or on the mountain side. These two pictures present before him. These ideals, one is the spirit of desire as we all ordinarily are entrapped. And the second one, the spirit of renunciation. Presented before Vivekananda clearly. Well, choose whomsoever you want. Now Swami Vivekananda has to choose between the two. Here is the test of the spirituality of Vivekananda in that early stage of his life. Whether he has to be entrapped in the worldly life or become a holy man. Finally, Vivekananda chose the renunciation of desire. Thus he established himself in spiritual mastery of the ideal. That was the only way he felt to gain the vision of God. When Sri Ramakrishna saw him, he recognized this remarkable purity in his mind. There is not a single stain on his mind. So Sri Ramakrishna could give him the vision of God. He made him to go and see Divine Mother Kali. Talk to her as we are talking with you. Is it ever possible if mind is impure? Because Vivekananda was of such high stature, Sri Ramakrishna could show him. He had to pass through. If you read his life, there are two volumes, very big volumes, Life of Swami Vivekananda by Eastern and Western disciples. Two volumes are there. And then other five volumes of Life of Vivekananda published by Madam Louis Burke. Please go through them. You will understand the spirituality of Vivekananda. It is indescribable. When he came to America, when he addressed the Parliament of Religions, overnight he became known to the whole world, all over the place, all the newspapers. They began to praise him, put his photograph and gave comments. All the, Some of the newspaper cuttings are printed in the Louis Burke book. You can see those things. So, tremendous name and fame, tremendous applause from people, creature comforts, all those things came to him without his asking for them. He didn't want them, but they came. When they came, how did he behave? He did not give any attention to these things. He was all along thinking about the Divine Master who 
Who is that? Sri Ramakrishna. He said, Look, do you know who, who is speaking through my mouth? Do you think I am speaking? It is Sri Ramakrishna himself speaking. That's what Swami Vivekananda said. Referring to him himself, he says, Sri Ramakrishna guarded me night and day, every moment he was on my back. These are, these are the words of Swami Vivekananda. How can any temptations come and overpower him? That's it. There is another, another kind of, uh, what I should say, abstraction that might cause tremendous depression. That occurred. What is that? People who are jealous of Vivekananda's name and fame, who are jealous of his signal success at the Parliament of Religions, they began to spread all types of rumours, scandals against Swami Vivekananda, who was none other than Lord Shiva himself on this earth. And these people were throwing mud at him, though he showered flowers at them. They tried to injure his reputation by abusing and vilifying him. They even went to the extent of sending some most beautiful young women to tempt him. Somehow they want to destroy his personality. They want to put out the spiritual flame that was brightly shining in him. But when those ladies came before him, what did they feel when they saw him? They found him as simple and pure as a child. The ladies, you know, they have got the natural feeling of mother, that motherliness is there. Spontaneous love, that pure element of love can be experienced in the ladies. So when they found Vivekananda as simple and child, they could not do anything. On the other hand, all their lustful ideas were simply vanished by seeing Vivekananda. This Vivekananda, fire, spiritual fire. Who can dare to come? Who can dare? Amidst all these distractions, how Swami Vivekananda maintained himself, he kept, he kept up his equanimity of mind. That is the hallmark of spirituality. Equanimity. Whether name and fame, whether this man criticizes or that man praises, calm, 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 calm. That is Vivekananda. That is Vivekananda. Well, the time is already up. One or two instances I will try to finish early and probably may take five minutes more. Anyway, I will tell you in very brief, you know that there are <coughs> wonderful Upanishads which deal with the knowledge of Self. One of the famous Upanishads is Katha Upanishad. There the story of the boy, Nachiketas, 
a young boy full of wisdom when he went to yama the god of death because this boy was so pure and very strong spiritually he could go in his in this physical body he could uh, go to the abode of death he could talk to him he could see that was his purity well when lord yama appeared before him he asked what did he want then nachiketa asked three boons which yama was willing to give the most important of the boons which he asked the third boon is tell me sir the way to conquer re death what is this death that is causing fear why people are suffering it is because of the fear of death once that fear is gone then no more misery at all we are miserable because it is the fear that makes us more miserable than anything else so this third request is one for enlightenment on the great transition which is called death and of course you know that before uh, giving this knowledge of uh, atma he wanted to see whether nachiketas could be uh, deviated from this uh, spiritual pursuit so he offered him well nachiketas you are a boy this argument all over people every every now and then i hear this people this is very common same thing yama also is telling you are a boy you see enjoy this world now this time for your enjoyment don't worry about your uh, what happens to death that's why do you worry about death now why do you even think about it think about enjoyment whatever you want i will give thousand years you want to live granted how many kingdoms you want 100000 kingdoms granted how many people you want to serve millions of people granted everything whatever you want i will grant you but don't ask me about this death about this self etc even the devatas they find difficult to understand this you are yet a boy you will have to pass through that uh, worldly experience then you will get some maturity then even then i don't think uh, this is necessary what does it matter to you like that he began to talk to him in a very clever way to avoid it. but nachiketa was very firm well sir you are telling me 1000 years i will give you after 1000 years what will happen then emma became silent he said yeah, after 1000 years one has to go then that's what i want to know what happens to soul after death where does he go what is his nature i want that knowledge what is the use of this other type of knowledge which is useless i don't want any of your uh, this uh, bones which you are uh, trying to give it to me you have all these things with yourself and give to those who want them let them enjoy it i want only that knowledge spiritual knowledge please give that nothing short of that finished yama couldn't talk one sentence afterwards she became silent not only that he became he was very happy seeing the steadfastness in him seeing the purity of that person well then he gave the knowledge beautiful you can read that cut open wherever vivekananda would give talk he would always refer to cut open he liked it very much and our youngsters should read them instead of reading all sorts of rubbish books try to read these good books 
that's the important point. Well, there are many instances to highlight this uh, hallmark of spirituality. It is for you to make more studies and get more acquaintance with this knowledge. With this I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you all. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahaviryam Karavavagai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastoma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om May the Divine Spirit protect us, guide us, give us strength and right understanding. May we not hate one another. May love and harmony be with us all. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. May the Divine Lord protect us. May He nourish us. May we work in harmony with great vigor. May our study be illuminating and fruitful. May we not hate each other. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.